Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wolfie Cast, or just Wolfie if you'd prefer. And it has been a long time since I've made anything gigantic related. Gigantic got or is going to be soon re-released, uh, soon at least of the posting date of this video, uh, to be re-released again. And it's incredible. Uh, so to celebrate that, I've decided to make a tier list uh, based off of the most recent beta playtest that featured the rush mode, a new rush mode. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, there are probably other videos out there by now that are de uh, describing what that mode is. But this tier list is a compilation of my opinions of what I think every character, which tier rather, I believe every character is entirely dependent on the rush mode. So just as a <laughs> just as a forewarning for everyone here. This is entirely my opinion with slight, uh, you know, slight feedback of, of players I've played with for a very long time, um, considering their thoughts and what they uh, what they personally uh, tiered these characters. Uh, to break it down quickly, our A tier, or rather we have we have five tiers here. We have the S tier. Uh, the S tier is going to belong to one person and one person only. And this is going to be the this is going to be the normal formula for every one of my videos, every one of my tier list videos at least. Uh, the S tier will belong solely to one person. Uh, the A tier are heroes that are very very good. They're just they're always good picks in every in almost every situation, uh, almost every map. There's really no downside to ever picking them. B tier is very middle of the road. Uh, but also including situationally useful characters uh, that tend to just bring the best things, but are somewhat lacking uh, in terms of certain things. C tier is just kind of under average. Uh, C tier, you really consider them just kind of there's they do OK, but there are people that are better in the roles that you want them to fulfill. I like that's it's just something where you can pop off on them, uh, but there's just someone who's either easier or better or both that you probably would just want on your team. And then D tier is the unfortunate bottom of the barrel. Uh, these heroes are almost entirely worthless in in every situation, or they're just or I shouldn't say worthless. They're just under par. They're they're they're. They require too much to be useful, and even when they're in their best case scenario, they're still kind of meh. So, that's the grading system. Let's get right into it. Starting uh, with Ashlyn, we're just going to do the order that's listed here, because I think that's the best uh, thing to do. I apologize if the music is a little loud. I did forget that it does get a little louder as it gets further through this track. Uh, but anyway, starting off with Ashlyn. Man. Ashlyn, uh, anyone that knows me knows Ashlyn is my girl, but unfortunately, I really just got to put her in C. Um, Ashlyn's, Ashlyn's best utility is the fact that she provides a lot of just permanent, or rather semi-permanent uh, armor buffs and uh, the slow healing over time with her better builds. Um, if you're utilizing the ranged attack that gives the piercing through uh, allies projectile that grants bonus armor, if you hit them with it, as well as Kator's aura that provides armor, it's it's definitely useful. Uh, but unfortunately, Ashlyn just it, she has no real damage output. Um, Kator Kator's tracking is is kind of strange it doesn't work super well it's a bit wonky um and overall like just i feel like there are better supports I, I feel like there are better support characters out there like with the build that i use it's very strange because it's kind of hybrid um but i i find that she's just not super great honestly the only reason she's not in d tier is the fact that she's got a good interrupt with her Q. Uh, if you choose the interrupt path, of course, if you go the path that creates that field uh, that, you know, destroys projectiles, you know, it's 
it's then she has nothing essentially except for her ults. And that's another thing. I like she's really only barely in C tier because of the fact that her ult doesn't work most of the time on most maps because it's kind of bugged and it's really unfortunate and sad because I love this character. I love how she feels. I love how she plays. She's just there are better people for the job. And that's unfortunately just how is <coughs> excuse me. I'm very sick. I just wanted to get this recorded. So I apologize uh, in advance for coughing in your ears. Uh, I'm also doing this all in one take. So this is going to be probably a long video because I like to rant. But anyway, Beckett. <sighs> this is going to be a hot take. I feel like Beckett. If it wasn't rush mode, I feel like she'd be in my A tier and possibly even contention for my one S uh, one person S tier. Um, well, actually, that might belong to Team Matt. But anyway, uh, because it's specifically rush mode, I have to put her in B. I think she's gonna, or uh, yeah, I think she's gonna be the top of B. Like looking at the rest of the, looking at the rest of the cast at a cursory glance, I think she's gonna stay at the top of B, like barely scraping A. Uh, if I decide to move things later, she has so much damage output. She's always had so much damage output. She's been crazy. Like every every build that she has, every every grenade path that she has, every LMB uh, and Q path that she has, she just does a ton of damage. Her ult does a ton of damage. It's a huge AOE. If you get if you get hit it if you get hit by it by multiple times, like you are taking so much freaking damage. Um, the only reason she's not in A tier. Is because she has one interrupt on one specific path on her grenade that makes it push. That's the only thing that's holding her back. Because if it, if it was just a race for damage, if it was like you know a, a contested damage control on the clash mode, she'd be an A tier. We all know she'd be an A tier, but unfortunately, I can't give her better than B because she only has one movement ability. It's not even an interrupt. And and everyone everyone that's kind of learned this rush mode knows that interrupts are the key. Interrupts are king. Like the more the more interrupts a character has, the higher they're gonna be on this tier list. Like you're just gonna see that. Um, but yeah, that's where Beckett is for me. Charnock. Man, I I've been sleeping on Charnock a lot for a long time, like truthfully. And I have to put him in A tier. Charnock just he's he's generally honestly slept on he does so much damage he's very forgiving as far as like aiming goes because the projectiles are really freaking big those uh, like especially if you charge to tier two or even tier three if you take the tier three upgrades um he like he's got a general good amount of bulk like a pretty decent health pool um he, he's got that Q to escape. He's got the right mouse button uh, that, you know, deflects and pushes at the end of the cast, which the upgrade you should be taking in this in this game mode. There's almost no reason to ever take uh, to not take it because it's just really good. Uh, Q pushes by default. E is a huge area of effect that does a lot of damage. And <laughs> Ed will Ed will kill me for saying this, but I would even say that like the meteor could even be viable in the rush mode because of the fact that it interrupts when it lands or I, th I th at least i think one of the upgrades interrupts when it lands i have to check that now hold on super quick charnock hot hail okay so it stuns on it stuns on one upgrade but it's a stun is still an interrupt so that's that's worth you know considering if you don't want to go over the the larger area um and then his ult also does a small you know knock up on hit too and just everything does a lot of damage you know that he's gonna have he's gonna find a, a reason to be part of the team i don't think he's gonna stay like at the very top of a tier but charnock is really good like very very slept on hero uh ezrin <clears throat> to be honest ezrin is another person i've been sleeping on for a long time um but even so, I think he has great damage output, but I can't put him anywhere higher than C. Um, 
Oh, and just in just in advance, I'm also going to be ranking these within the tiers themselves. Uh, so the placement in each individual tier is going to matter. I do think that Ezrin is a little lower than Ashlyn. So here's the thing. Ezrin is really good at being just a nuisance and forcing people to consider the fact that he's there. Like he has he has a good damage output. He's got great survivability for being the uh, character class that he is of like this kind of casterish uh, ranged attacker. Um, but he doesn't have any interrupts. He doesn't have an, any interrupts in his, in his entire kit and any upgrade path. There is nothing that interrupts. Um, the only reason he's not in D is because I have to respect the fact that he does a lot of damage and he will cause problems if he's ignored. And he just, he just doesn't die. I, I honestly don't know that much about Ezrin. Like I, I never got fully into Ezrin Gaul, but I've seen people play him and I'm just like, man, <laughs> this guy's doing something. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not incredible, but you know, it's, it works. So I, I gotta, I gotta give respect to the fact that it at least works. Uh, I just don't think that it's really super great for rush mode. Moving on. We've got Griselma. <laughs> oh man. Granny. I think granny's gotta be my first D tier. And <laughs> that's that's gonna be a hot take for a lot of people. Um but I have to explain. Griselma Griselma for some reason everyone sees the hands and they just run away. They just they just run away, they completely ignore the damage potential that they do. And they get overwhelmed and they're just like, oh my god, Granny's doing so much damage. Like these hands, that's crazy. They they're healing for so much. You you have to focus them. The, the the not not use your focus. I'm saying you have to focus fire them. Um your team has to hit the granny hands like collectively together, and then they go down. It's a very long cooldown, and Griselma is so useless without them she's got like that neat little trick with her cue that if you summon a hand in it and it, it you know does like this little area of effect interrupt thing like that's pretty neat and i i won't say that the hands don't do like a great amount of utility if they're utilized properly like if they're ignored of course she's gonna pop off because that's her whole gimmick uh but the hands are just the hands are just so easy to destroy if you just pay attention to where they are and tell your team to like destroy them and she's just kind of standing there like either slapping with her hand or, or slapping with her little hand stick or uh or doing like this little beam that doesn't do that much damage on its own without the hand helping uh i don't think rizoma can be any higher than d tier um she's definitely annoying and then the hands of a good player she's a nuisance uh but she's just she's just not it i'm sorry I'm sorry to say she's not it. <coughs> Ugh, all right, moving on to <laughs> moving on to HK. HK, I put in A tier. That's it's not a lot of thinking to to come to that conclusion. I mean, HK's always been really good. He's super bulky. He's de deceptively tanky for being a ranged attacker. Um, his right mouse button has, you know, the long range snipe potential, but it also has the path uh, that does the AOE daze if you're if you're uh, fortified, and that daze is that daze is super helpful in rush mode, obviously, because it it stops from capturing points. It also does a good amount of damage. Uh, the mortar ability on its own does a little knock up, so that stops the interrupt. And his alt is just. It's a huge amount of damage output, especially if every rocket goes on one target. Like, 9 out of 10 times that person is going to get deleted. Uh, because by the time that all the rockets land, you know, HK has continued to fire his, you know, gun. And, and they're just getting mowed down. Um, I will say, I think HK does lack a certain... Uh, you know, once, once the abilities are on cooldown, I think he does lack a certain, like area of effect potential that a couple of other attackers uh, have but HK's always been solid he's just really good um yeah 
I, I did not see a lot of HKs in this playtest, but when I did, I was just like, yeah, he's, <laughs> they're just, they're, he's popping off. Uh, let's see, Amani is next. Oh, where do I put Amani? I really like Amani. I like Amani a lot. Um, I have to put her in B tier. And honestly, a lot of it is for the same reasons that Beckett is in B tier. Um, I'm going to put her below Beckett just because of the fact that Beckett is much more mobile uh, and has just probably better area of effect potential, like high damage output continuously. Um, Imani's also really easy to kill um, against like an enemy trip, especially, or like a Wu. Uh, and then she's forced to retreat and then she's essentially out of the fight for a while. Uh, so putting pressure on her is just, it's pretty easy and she's very punishing or sorry, she's very punishable. Um, but Amani that's left alone, Amani that positions properly and that lands her shots does a lot of freaking damage. Uh, that that's there's no argument for that. Um, if you go the blast bolts, the bolts that push, uh, obviously that's a good interrupt. And there is a potential interrupt tree on her smoke grenade. Uh, if you you know, want to, if you want to, you know, lose the potential of the, you know, blast away smoke bomb, which honestly you really shouldn't unless you're crazy like me, because I love the choking gas. Um, but yeah, uh, her ult is really good, does a lot of damage. Um, but I think that there are better picks, but she is B. I just, you can't deny that she does a lot of damage, and a good Amani is very deadly and almost unkillable. Lord Gnosis, Kenosos, my boy. Um, I hate to do it to him. Gnosis is D tier, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be a hot take, I think, for a lot of the, the more newer people, um, because. The only people that play Nasus in this game are people that know how to use him and people that will mow people down. Um, the problem is that Nasus is a super big target. He has a super big hitbox, so he's very easy to punish. And though he has a massive health pool, he has no defensive capabilities whatsoever, except for an upgrade tree on his on his. E on his on his shouts that gives him a little bit of buffer health that's it he has i will say he has a great engage like with with the with the gore and if you do the launch side of the path like, like if you do the launch path upgrade it's a great engage it's very easy to follow up with his ult the ult is a very wide it does a lot of base damage if the bleed stays on him it does a lot of damage over time i can't deny that um but Nasus is just so easily punished and under like being attacked by coordinated teams, he just dies very, very quickly. And it's it's upsetting because Nasus is very fun. I actually very I very, very much like Nasus. Um But he's probably the worst melee character in the game right now. Like gen genuinely. Um and even though he does have a pretty high health pool, it's also to his downfall because of the fact that regeneration rates in the game are the same for everybody, uh, unless you have upgrades that change that. So he's going to take longer to get back in the fight because he has a bigger health pool. You know, if he if he runs and escapes with, you know, 200 or 100 health or even less, it's going to take at least like 12 to 15 seconds at best for him to get back to around like 75% or higher. Um, and by that point, like you're not really, you're not contributing to the fight. You know, your, your team is probably being pushed away because they're down a man. Um, or they've, you know, or the enemy team has just captured the, the point, uh, the contention point. I, I, I hate to do it to him. Nas is in D tier. Uh, if it was if it was the normal game mode, I think he'd be higher. Um, but because it's specifically rush, that's what this tier list is. Uh, I I can't put him higher than D. He'll probably stay at the top of D because I still think he's pretty good. Like he, he definitely has potential, and I've seen really good plays with him. Uh, but he's just he's not the right pick. 
Uh, Margrave. Hmm. <clears throat> I made a lot of points about Gnosis having that high health pool and like that being his detriment and genuine genuinely a lot of those same problems happen with margrave except the difference is that margrave has a better kit <laughs> he just has a better he, he just has all around better upgrades a better presence um his his q baseline pushes his E baseline interrupts, uh, and it can stun with upgrades. His Q can also interrupt with upgrades. His ult obviously interrupts uh, and launches. It's just a big area of effect. Um, and the right mouse button, by default, you know, deflects. And those those deflects can be the key point of uh, stopping an incoming interrupt for your team from capturing a point. Because... Nasus or not Nasus, sorry, Margrave is a tank. You know, Margrave is there to be <clears throat> a frontline, you know, presence, zoning, making space. And he is such a huge health pool. Even if he gets low, he still he still has like around the same amount of health as even the some of the most squishy characters in the game. Like the lowest health that any character has, I think, is 1,500, and there's a few that have, have that number. Um, but 1,500 health for Margrave is still, like, almost two-thirds or more of his health. Like, he's just got a huge health pool, and he has, an, he has an upgrade on his focus, like those passive talents, that makes him immune to critical hits. Which, just, it's so much effective damage soaking. It, if you chase him away, like, yeah, if you get him super low, he's going to be gone for a little while. But he's just, he's so impossible to kill in the right hands. And the fact that he also has dazes and can stick in the fight for, or not dazes, the fact that he has interruptions and can and can stick in the fight for such a long time, like, he's so solid. He's not extremely mobile, you know, we, we can admit that. Um, he's very big. He's very easy to hit, but he makes so much space just like a tank should. And uh, for sure, he's super solid B tier. I honestly think he could be higher, but I don't know. Um, I actually might put him above Amani. <laughs> that's that's very weird to say. Like three, three of my favorite characters are in my lowest tiers right now, and it's very sad. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, Mozu. I think Mozu has her place. Mozu has her place in the B tier. Uh, Mozu's got good damage output, even though it does take a little bit of winding up because that's just the mechanic of her left mouse button. Um, but, you know, she lands her hits. She does a lot of damage. It's very single target focus, but it's it's there. It's prevalent. Um, she has upgrades on her right mouse button and her Q uh, that can stop the enemy from capturing. So that's definitely helpful uh death ray is a little bit slept on i think it has a huge damage potential it's also super her focus is super easy to uh to like build up because she just has crazy damage output um and also with her q the fact that it reflects base and it's it's very easy to set up it's very defensive it's very good for defending wounds because the best the best characters in the game are the range damage dealers right now uh, at least for as far as like wound damage goes. Um, I don't think she's higher than Amani just because I do think she's... Well, honestly, actually, I think she is better than Amani. Um, just because, well, I honestly really they're about even. If I could put these two, like, if I could put these two portraits on top of each other, I think I would. Because they're just, they're... They're both very equally good for different reasons. Um, and it's, it's also map dependent. I, have, I haven't even touched map dependency at all. Um, although really with that in mind, I have to put Amani higher because I think Amani is just good on every map. Um, but anyway, Mozu I think is a solid B tier. Um, I think that I think the only thing stopping her from going up to A tier is because by default she doesn't have interrupts, but her better upgrades are those interrupts. So there's not really a reason to 
you know, get otherwise. Um, but yeah, I think she's okay. Oru. Oh, man. <laughs> the the private server discord is gonna have a cow i'm gonna put oru in c tier i'm putting oru i'm putting oru at the top of c tier i cannot deny oru has some great damage output i actually didn't know until very recently that his his just left mouse button if you apply multiple times and then hit him with the reveal clap uh e it does multiple ticks of damage based on how many cards they have i had no idea that's how it worked um or if that's maybe that's an upgrade i don't know but that's something new that i learned and i was like oh wow that's that's great potential burst damage um his traps his his traps on his q are very good I, I cannot deny that they are they are very good at their job. Uh, they're very large. They're very tall. They're they're. <laughs> it's very funny. They're they're flat cards on the ground, but they're kind of like cylindrical pillars. Like you can't really jump over them unless you go super super high. Um, and yes, each card can only be activated once. But the launch that they do is just it sends you hurtling away. It gets a really far launch. Um, but I just, that's really the only thing that Oru has. He is definitely the least mobile range damage dealer, on, like, in the cast. Um, he's got, like, some self, he's got, like, some self-peel tools. Like, if you take a, I think there's a right mouse button upgrade that pushes enemies away if they're point blank. Um, but other than that and the traps, that's all he has to get away. And his ult, because his ult makes him, like, float in the sky. Um... The reason I put Oru in C tier is because I think that there are damage dealers that just do more damage. Uh, there are characters in the game that have better, more reliable interrupts and are just bigger threats. Uh, Oru is also really, really easy to take down. Like, honestly, very similar to Imani. Uh, Oru, just, Oru just can't get away. Uh, like in the hands of a good trip or a woo or a Taito. He just he just can't do it. Um, and it, even if he has his ults, the ults, the, the final attack of the ult can be dodge iframed. Like you, with your invulnerability frames, you can dodge right before he claps to avoid that damage. He can also be interrupted out of finishing the ability because it takes so long to finish. So it's just like he, <laughs> he has... He has very high highs and very low lows, so I have to put him in C because I just think there are better options. Like I'm I'm sorry, private server. I'm sorry, all remains. I I don't think he's that good. I, I really, really don't. I respect what he does. I think that there are better people. Moving on to Paco. <coughs> I mean, this shouldn't be a surprise. Paco is top of A. Paco could be a contender for S tier um in this game mode paco is so incredibly frustrating to play against in in the good hand a good a good paco player of course um he's got so much self-sustain he's got so many interrupts like the right mouse button snowball interrupts the slide cue interrupts the ults at full channel interrupts you know no matter what no matter what Q path you take, like it's either going to push or if you do the snowball path, it's going to actually daze and interrupt. But either way, you're stopping the capture. Um, and because he has so much self healing, he can just get in and out of the fight very easily. Like throwing down that E, uh, the, the frigid, you know, path track <laughs> makes him faster and enemies slower. So like there's a double net gain of, of mobility that he's gaining to get out of there. Um, he doesn't have a lot of armor, admittedly, but he does have, I, th I think he has the second or third highest, like, base health in the game. Maybe, he's definitely top five. Zendora might have more base health, but it it's, it's not by much. Um, but he just, he's also a very surprising damage threat, because he's not... He's not entirely a tank. Like, he's definitely a bruiser. He can fill the tank role. Like, he's definitely a frontliner. Uh, but but it just 
the amount of base ability in his kit to do area of effect interrupts like he there's no possible way to put him any uh, lower than like the top of a tier like he is in contention for my s tier but we all know who that's going to go to when i get to him uh but next ramsey hmm ramsey's pretty good do i like ramsey better than hk that is the question I'm going to say yes. I think Ramsey is Ramsey's a very high skill cap character. Um <laughs> his his weird mechanic of like being a super crazy like dodge skirmisher almost pseudo evasion tank. Uh it's it's pretty hard to pull off. Actually, do I like him better than Charnock? Probably. Yeah, cuz he's he's got that he's got that interrupt path on his right mouse button like Every four or five seconds, or maybe even le like, I think it is four seconds, he can interrupt everyone that he passes through. Like if they're attacking or capturing, it's crazy. Um, poison obviously also can't be, you know, slept on because healing characters are pretty good in the game. Like self self sustain is is very good in the game, uh, and healing reduces, uh, or sorry, poison reduces healing that you receive. So that that's that's pretty good um he does not have a good ult like admittedly in in this game mode i mean in in either game mode like his ult is really only useful for helping himself and kind of making it hard to see uh but it doesn't last long enough to really be a huge detriment like at all um it's it's really all about his own self-escape um but he he has damage output he has dodges he has interrupts his, his Q is an upgrade path that deflects, like, incoming pr projectiles. It just... He's got all the things that he needs to be super effective in this game. And he, he also has really good, like, stamina management upgrades. Like, he, he can dodge so many times before he's actually fully out of stamina. It's crazy. Um, I've seen good Ramsey players, like, really pop off. Um, I mean, gosh, the more I talk about him, though, like... I don't know. I don't think he's better than HK. I think HK does. I mean, <laughs> I was about to say he does a lot of the same things, but that's not true at all. Um, HK. HK has better reliable tools um, to, you know, continuously interrupt. Um, and he just does more wound damage. So I kind of have to put him higher comparatively to Ramsey. So, yeah, but he's Ramsey's still a tier. Like, there's no question. A good Ramsey will absolutely destroy uh, the enemy team and just be impossible to kill. And, and if he's paying attention to where, you know, the power is being summoned and he's there, like, good luck, good, good luck capturing the power. Unless you just f like fully stun lock him down and just knock him out. Uh, next is Rucker. <laughs> Everyone knew Rucker was going in S tier. Everyone who has played this game knows that Rucker is my one and only S tier pick. <coughs> Every, single thing that Rucker does has an interrupt potential every single upgrade not not every single upgrade but every single ability upgrade tree has an interrupt somewhere like his right mouse button pushes his Q pushes his E pushes his ult does a launch that you know it it just everything that he has does insane amounts of crowd control that stop you from capturing the the power orbs on top of all that he's just impossible to kill the amount of shielding that he gets like his passive shield build up thing it it's just impossible to take down and and when you do finally take it down you know like he still has a pretty chunky health pool to fight through uh his his q dive burrow just makes him entirely invulnerable and regen shields like just everything that this character has is is crazy he's he's crazy i don't want to say he's like i don't want to say he's like nerf worthy because it's not like he's it's not like he's completely obliterating everyone in his path and like getting hundreds and hundreds of kills <coughs> but in this game mode like he's s tier he's crazy uh, next in line, Sven. I gotta put Sven in A tier, not above Paco. I don't know why 
Ah, come on. There we go. Yeah, Sven's an eight here. Um, Sven's the best support in the game. He always has been. He probably always will be unless someone else like super crazy comes out. Um, <laughs> and the reason alone is because of his bouncy pub, uh, his, you know, elastic ooze that gives the jump pad. Um, but even even without like that super relevancy in this game mode, like he's got a good interrupt with Q on base. It just pushes away and there are upgrades that make it do, you know, more pushing or, or more disruption. Um, he, you know, he's got the ult that builds relatively quickly that also interrupts and dazes and, and the transformation lasts a minimum of two seconds, uh, which is super helpful because it just shuts people down entirely. Um, he's got great healing output. <coughs> the, the, the armor crack on his right mouse button. It's very good. Um, just makes easy uh, enemies easier to kill. Um, I think the biggest thing about him though, in my opinion, uh, there's an upgrade on his left mouse button called slow roasted that applies a nine second burning debuff. And it, it, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it keeps the enemy that is burning in combat, which means that they're not regenerating. They're not regenerating health passively because they're still considered in combat. So even if you don't get the kill, you're pushing someone away from the fight that's super low and you're just, you're just keeping them down a man and it's super forgiving because that's the same upgrade path that gives like the larger area of effect burns they're just <clears throat> they're just super easy to land and, and it's very forgiving so you can get like three or more people burning all at once and if they're running away and they're just fight they're fighting over like their bloomer health orbs or bloomer healing beam and they're staying out of the fight um sven is sven is so good sven just i, I think every I think every uh I think every team composition like doesn't require Sven, but like there's there's no downside to having Sven ever in, in any situation. Uh Team Matt. I gotta put Team Matt in A tier for sure. Um Team Matt just does so much damage. Uh, we did <laughs> Team Matt really just honestly does too much damage. Like, let's be real. Um, collectively agreed on that she's very overtuned. Um, just the, the the burst potential from that missile upgrade that locks on the same character, like the same person multiple times. Um, the shock blast like interrupt is just very large, very easy to land, and also does a lot of damage. She's incredibly difficult to kill because her jetpack is so fast it goes so far it's she's she's crazy her ult builds up super fast or her focus builds up super fast and it does a lot of damage like she's just she's insane um and you you know some people might be thinking like oh you said becca does a lot of a lot of area damage and everything does a lot of damage but you put her in b tier it's it's because she has a better escape better interrupts um and she's she's just better like she's she's genuinely just better um yeah she team at team at's the best shooter in the in the game right now she's the best range dps in the game like it's it's not even close <coughs> uh but moving on to trip mm -hmm. i mean trips in a tier two i gotta put her above charnock i actually I actually want to put Charnock down below HK as well. Um but but Trip Trip is Trip's pretty hard to play, like I'll admit, but she a, a, a lot like a, like a lot like Paco and Rutger, Trip has something in almost every ability. Like somewhere in the upgrade tree there's the ability to disrupt somebody. Um like the Leftmost Mountain attack from stealth, the stab attack interrupts if it hits um obviously like the qq the the q to kick upgrade that pushes upwards and and launches on the second upgrade um her e has an upgrade that dazes people that are nearby if you choose to take that upgrade um it's a it's slightly less uh self-defensive than the other upgrade because it breaks her out of stuns um but 
her her ult also you know stuns if it hits. She she just has the right tools to to do everything. I think she's honestly the best assassin. She kind of she's she's just really good um, at doing exactly what she needs to do, especially in this game mode. Uh, she's super fast, and she also has a super low health pool, which sounds initially like it would be a detriment, but it means that when she starts regenerating health, she's just like immediately back in the fight. Um, she's also nearly impossible to kill because a good trip player will save either their Q or their E to get out of dodge. Like she's, she's very, very hard to kill. And in the good hands or in, in the hands of a good player, like she's just nearly unstoppable and she's, she's doing everything right. It's no contest. She's an A tier. I honestly think she could be higher, but I, I, I can't deny that Sven is just really good because of the other utility that he brings. Like trip just does, a lot of damage and disruption Sven disrupts but also like he he, he attack but he also protect you know like <laughs> it's I can't believe I said that um but anyway uh moving on to Taito I mean talk about like the f talk about like the furthest potential uh deficit uh Taito's D tier Taito's my current like near bottom of D tier and there's there's one character that's lower than him and I'll get to her um in a minute oh my my songs ended i went through every track in this video how long is this right now oh no all right anyway um <laughs> but anyway back to taito um taito has one interrupt on his e uh and that's it and it's 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 an it's a it's a uh it's an interrupt that you have to you know fully commit upgrades into um he's just He's just not the right choice. He's the worst assassin by far out of the the out of the four assassin characters in the game. I guess five if you're insane and count like Nasus or Margrave as assassins, depending on how you build them. Um, but uh, Taito is just really hard to play properly, and even when he's the most effective, he's not even doing that much. Like he's just the every every ability bleeds and bleeds are just so easy to get rid of or ignore because they don't stack at full effectiveness like anyone that doesn't know um if 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 the if sorry i'm stuttering now if this video has been very long um if an enemy hero is currently being inflicted by multiple stacks or like multiple applications of the same degen the same debuff like bleed every consecutive bleed is at a less at like at a lesser effectiveness like whichever one does the most initial damage is the one that is ticking but then every stacking degen of the same type is doing less damage uh so the fact that all of taito's the fact that all of Taito's like damage over time abilities are bleed, he's kind of shooting himself in the foot because like a lot of his a lot of his really good upgrades are the fact that they just apply that bleeding. Like I won't deny that Taito does a good job at getting kills and he's very hard to kill. Like he can get in and get a kill and get out if he's good. Um, but he's just it's it's not rewarding to play him. He's he's not good he's he hasn't been good for a very long time um and he's unfortunately at one of those points where if he did if he did more damage he'd like just skyrocket into a tier um but if he did like the same amount of damage he's kind of just stuck in this weird place um that's just that's just how it is it's very unfortunate um but yeah i i don't think i don't think taito's good i think taito's like near the bottom. Um, I hate to put two characters in D tier like consecutively. Vadasi is just meh. <laughs> I will say, I will say a good Vadasi is noticeable. A good Vadasi like will manage her health properly, uh, is nearly unkillable, and is of course applying a lot of you know sustain to the team. But that's about it. That's really all that she does. Um, in this game mode in Rush, uh, it's very important to have some sort of disruption. She 
has almost nothing except for like a push on a very specific Q upgrade path, which is not really like the greatest because <laughs> it's very short range and it also puts her in a lot of danger. Um, and that's not where you want to be. Um, I, I like I won't deny that she has great healing. Um, the only reason I put her above Grisama is the fact that, you know, if you spot a good, if you spot a good Vadasi, like she's definitely doing what she's supposed to do. Um, she's definitely like a threat, uh, to keeping, you know, the longevity of the fight. Uh, but that's really all that she does. It, it's, it's, it's kind of upsetting. Honestly, I think Vadasi is really fun. Um, but she's just not good. Uh, Voden. Oh God. Where do I put Voden? If it were anything other than rush mode, I would have Voden somewhere in like mid A, maybe even high A. Uh, but the fact that it's rush mode, I've got to put him in C. I actually might even put him below uh, Ashlyn. Uh, Voden does a lot of damage. Everyone knows Voden does a lot of damage. A very good Voden is like a huge threat like very slept on damage output um like huge burst potential if you do like the throwing spikes um and if you land if you land your shots like the enemy team is gonna die it's it's there's no argument there um Voden just has Voden has no reliable interrupt except for his ultimate uh which actually takes a good amount of time to charge uh Unless you're, you know, unless you're obviously landing every shot. But if you're landing every shot, the enemy's probably dying, which is really more effective than the ultimate is anyway. Um, that being said, I have seen a lot of good Voden ults, like, being used properly to lock people down. Um, and and the immobilize is very strong. Um, honestly, I might put him at the top of C. Um, no, Ori's, Ori's got the better interrupt. And, like, he... Yeah, this is this is another situation where I kind of want to put them like on top of each other, like I did for Imani and Mozu, uh, but I can't. Um, they just they both do very well at what they're at, in their tier for different reasons. Um, actually, no, I gotta put Vote in higher because of the fact that his his uh, pool upgrades into a super jump pad, like that's that's really good. Um, but other than that, like. He's really not doing that much to to the rush mode. Um, but again, if, if it were anything other than rush mode, like he'd very easily be somewhere like in this echelon, like somewhere near Trip and Sven. <coughs> but that is not the case. All right, Wu. Um, do I like Wu better than T-Mat? Hmm... Yeah, I gotta put Wu above T Mat. It's it sounds very strange because a lot of people like gen genuinely kind of think that uh <laughs> genuinely kind of think that melee is not really in the best of place right now. Uh, but I don't know. Like Wu, Wu really works well because again, he's one of those characters that has innate interrupts in every single ability in his kit. Like RMB baseline does a little push if you kick him upwards. You know, the, the Q has an interrupt on the initial wave, and then the punch does a lot of damage. His E, of course, with the with you know the pull will pull them off of the point and it stuns them as they're pulled. Uh and then his ult is a launch. So like, yeah, he's got the tools. He's also just incredibly mobile, and he's really hard to kill because he's hard to pin down. Like a a good woo is just all over the place. <laughs> like a blur like in and out of the fight just everywhere and, and you're constantly losing track of them um i am not a good woo player i've seen good woo players they are terrifying like in every sense of the word they're just absolutely terrifying um the more popular path for woo right now seems to be like the spinning ability q upgrade path because it pushes multiple people like multiple times and he does he does less damage in the clash. I'm or sorry, in the rush upgrade. I'm gonna call it the rush, the the, the rush woo build, um, because that's really what it is. Like that's all it's for. Um, so he's not really playing like an assassin. He's definitely playing like this in and out like brawler style, much like Paco, um, just with less regeneration. Um, but he he just 
he just works so well. He 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 has exactly everything that he needs. Um and I I've seen Wu's pop off. I've seen Wu's like <laughs> I seen Wu's interrupt like middle capture points against teams of three or more like by himself for like a minute and a half or longer like by the time that <laughs> by the time that their capture orb has come back up like he's still just in and out there like spinning and kicking and it's 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 crazy like i i mean i <laughs> i honestly think i could put Wu over paco yeah i think i'm putting Wu over paco like the more i talk about Wu, i'm just like yeah he's he's got everything that he needs uh, Zenobia. Uh, I gotta put Zenobia in D. <laughs> this is gonna be another hot take. Um, Zenobia is not it. Well, okay. If I if I put Ezrin in C, I gotta put Zenobia in C. Like that's that's the honest truth. The more I think about it, um, because at least at least Zenobia has an interrupt on her Q like her Q has the push at base and it has like a launch and her ultimate also stops people from, you know, capturing. Um, but, but people don't use her focus properly. It's very, very frustrating because I see, I, I see like three people getting locked down and then they're trying to attack them instead of, you know, capturing the point or, or like she'll capture three that are on the wound and like they're the, the team, her team is like still trying to stab the three people that are in stasis and they're not realizing that they're not doing any damage. I just, she's so difficult to play properly. She, she requires very high skill and even playing at her best. Like she's not doing very much. Um, she's just, she's also super easy to kill and she just doesn't have, she doesn't have anything like valuable. She, she 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 just uh, there's so many other characters that you could play and like she has a great amount of debuffs she's got very good area control but it's like soft crowd control it's not good for rush it just and her her overall like squishiness like focusing zenobia down she's gonna die in like a second and a half like the the second that one person is shooting her and like two melee are on her like she's just a goner yeah the more i'm talking about it like the less i like her she's she's just zenobia is not good i'm sorry zenobia is not good <laughs> she's very fun to play but she's not good uh same with zendora Zendora's the bottom of my barrel character. This is like a really terrible way to finish. Like, I feel like it was, it was Vadasi, Zenobia, Zendora, and like Taito, like very much like near back to back all on the bottom. Um, Zendora is, Zendora is useless, you guys. Like, genuinely, she is so useless. She has one ability, her Q ability that pushes and that's it. That is all she provides to the the interruption crowd control table. Her, I will say, like she's got a fair amount of damage. She's very hard to kill, but she's not a threat. Like I don't I don't know why there are a lot of people that see Zandora like running towards her towards them, and they just like run like they panic and just run away. She is. She's not hard to kill. She's not a huge threat. Like, yeah, she has a good amount of base armor. She's got a good base health. But if you're attacking Zandora and not literally almost everyone else on this roster, like, you're doing something wrong. Um, her only mobility is that Q, which she probably used to push you off of the capture point. Um, so she's not getting away. Um... I, like if you're in a full like melee comp, like a, you know, there's there's room for Zandora in that comp because you know all of her auras are also affecting them, but like that's very that's one very specific comp, and even then it's just not super good because the best people in the game right now are are mostly you know these range characters. Like everyone B tier and higher is ranged except for like Vodin and Oru, um, and and Ezrin. I just. Zendora's not good. 
don't don't play Zendora. Like something needs to be done with Zendora for for her to do anything. Um, but that is that is my tier list, you guys. Um, yeah, looking at all this, I think I'm pretty happy with where everyone is. Um, <laughs> again, I'm very sad that some of my favorite characters are like not in very good tiers. I guess Imani's here, like she's okay, and of course Sven. I love Sven. Um, I was, you know, my initial. My initial character was Sven. I love him. Um, but like Ashlyn, Nasus, Vadazi, like all these characters I really like. And they're all like down here. Um, but that's the honest truth. That's or at least my honest truth. That's my opinion. Um, but yeah, if you guys liked this video, uh, be sure to give it a like. Uh, I appreciate it. Share with your friends. Uh, <laughs> feel free to comment your agreements or disagreements. as I'm sure there's plenty of those coming um but that is uh that is how i see it so thank you for watching have a great evening